We don't have a newspaper that, you know, covers all the news in this county, but um, uh, how about a, a Facebook page, because most people are on Facebook that covers community events and community get-togethers and positive things in the community. There's multiple, um, Arc Ask Arcadia or, you know, different things that are Facebook pages, but a central one would be be, I think, at least effective since we don't have a newspaper. It, we're working in a lot of rural communities. Right now it's a big challenge in rural communities. It's also a challenge in every community in the country. Um, because of changes in journalism in the news media industry, most of us, uh, many of us live in uh, news and information deserts. And um, it's no exception here. We're working on this in Alamance County, North Carolina, because it's a major challenge there. And I think it's not only a challenge, but it reinforces when we live in close-knit circles and we're separated from one another unintentionally, right? And when we're in a survival mode without getting the right information and news, that also contributes to that. So I think this is a critical challenge. I think we can find ways to leverage social media in a positive way. It doesn't have to be negative. Um, I think there are ways to, like we're doing in Alamance County, where we're identifying networks that already exist that can be distribution channels for different news and information. Um, so I think there are lots of things we can do. We're gonna have to start to reconstruct um, some of this. The Patterson Foundation has started a new newsletter here in DeSoto that is a start. Um, and I think we need to keep building on, on that, but it's a really important challenge. When you have victories, you know there's a tendency for people in this community to be, be a very straightforward, humble people. They're not braggarts. They don't go around patting themselves on the back, telling everybody how wonderful they are. All right? They just hunker down and get things done. So perhaps we need to find a way to accept the fact that we need to say more about those things that we have done that truly are making a difference and have made a difference. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think that's why I was talking about the Making the Invisible Visible tool because I do believe that there are places and groups that are working together here. And there, look, I can't say enough times, there's a lot of good and goodness here, right? There's a lot of progress being made, notwithstanding the challenges that you face, and the challenges are real. But it's very hard to believe that there is progress being done or that there are people working together effectively if we're not lifting up and making those stories visible to ourselves and to one another. We don't have to, you know, I often think about the Good Samaritan parable. You know, when the Good Samaritan stopped when the person was knocked down and robbed and he brought, you know, two priests went by, two pastors went by and left the person there. And then the third person, the Samaritan, stopped and brought the person back to town, made sure the person got medical care make sure the person got back up to the feet. Nowhere in the Good Samaritan parable does it talk about the Good Samaritan bragging. Nowhere. So I think we can tell these stories and still maintain our humbleness, which I think is one of your points, which I think is really important. That's part of what makes DeSoto County DeSoto County. Um, but it doesn't mean we can be humble and still lift up the goodness that we're creating because the goodness um, is good, it's important. So I think that's something that we can, we can strengthen here over the coming months. Hi, I just wanted to take advantage of your experience around the country. So is there a, a county that you can recall or relate to that, that, that was about in our state and then maybe with some specifics of what, so we can just get attached yeah. to a few specific ideas that got them to the next place you think we could get versus the far beautiful vision, uh, just maybe something from your, from your experience. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Clark County, Kentucky is the same size as this county. It's about 35,000 people. Um, we worked there starting in 2017. Uh, when we started working there, the community was very, it's a different community here, but it was um, divided. The faith community was at each other's, um, were competing with each other. Uh, kids felt abandoned there. There was an opioid and meth crisis, and that's in part why kids felt abandoned, even though they were going to Blue Ribbon schools. Uh, there was a divide by race in this community. You didn't go to the North End, that was the African American section. You didn't go to the other parts of the community, that was the white section. So there were divisions at every turn. 
or separation at every turn. And so some of the things that came, the downtown was, um, had fallen in disrepair. There were drug needles all over. There was prostitution there. The infrastructure was crumbling. Um, local businesses had shuttered. So you get the picture. Uh, and one last thing, they believed their best days were behind them. And they kept trying to reclaim the past. So by using our approach and because of their good smarts and the hard work they put in, they came together and started to rejuvenate their downtown, right? They built the public will, they tapped into the community's voice and city council decided and the, and the mayor started to do code enforcement. They got infrastructure repaired there. They cleaned up the drug needles and they pushed out the prostitution. They went from $700,000 investment to 7 million in two years. When you go to Clark County, Winchester, Kentucky now, which is larger than Arcadia, but similar in, the, in terms of its role in the county, it's a rejuvenated downtown. Looks nothing like it did in 2017. The opioid and meth crisis, people came together. The medical system, because of how it was structured, people would come in after they overdosed, they would be detoxed in the ER and then they would be back on the streets. So two local women who were in recovery themselves decided they went to a conference in Lexington and they learned how to create a coaching system by other people in recovery who met folks who had overdosed in the ER. Much like the Good Samaritan story, they met them there, they took them home, they figured out how to build social networks around them, they provided job training to them, they provided financial literacy skills if they needed them, and it was so successful they reduced the opioid and meth um, challenge there. So I could keep going. They did that, they had a reckoning with their racial history, which for 20 or 30 years they had tried and failed at, but they did it. Their education system started to um, reform itself. So it, this is all documented in a book called Unleashed, which I think may be in the back. Um, and we have a longer report, um, more comprehensive report on our website that you can download for free. It's called One Step at a Time. So that's similar, different challenges, different community, but it shows that it can be done. It shows it can be done. Does that help? Great. Hi, Rich. Hey. Um, I want to say thank you for doing this. It's well needed. Um, and I also want to know, uh, when do we start? <laughs> Sam, right? Yes, sir. Yep. So we've started. Right? People came together, right? People said, well, it's really hard to engage folks here, but we had 24 conversations with residents. It wasn't always easy, but we did it. We did these 36 interviews. We did these 10 roundtables where people came out. There's 150, 200 people here tonight, right? So, but here's the other thing. You started before we showed up because you had already been doing good work, right? Early grade level reading work, DeSoto Cares, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's been going on in this community, to Terry's point, that may not be visible to all of us, but it's here. So we're building on those good things. So this is one step. We're all here tonight. Another step is we're holding a public innovators lab October 24th and 25th, right here at the Turner Center, where we can teach people this approach to turning outward and how to root change in what matters to people and grow the civic culture and unleash this chain reaction that I'm talking about. So, and then from there, we're gonna be working over the next two years to catalyze this change and to spread it throughout the county, building on the good things that have already happened, building on the good things that have already happened. And then, Sam, we leave. I don't live here. As much as I'd like to buy a house here, I don't live here, it's your community. So this has to be owned by the community and driven by the community, we'll walk beside you, but we're not gonna lead it. We're not gonna lead it, and that's really important. So, but we're starting, we're moving. You wanna hold it? Okay, hi everyone, my name is Amanda Reuter, and I wanted to address a misunderstanding, and it kinda touches on Duncan's question and Sam's question. Um, there is a newspaper, it's called the Arcadia Community Local, and there is a Facebook page, Miss Sandra Guffey and Dan um, Sutphin operate it and make sure it's up to date. 
there's a calendar event of events on that website. If you go to DeSotoBOCC.com, you can find out everything that happens. As long as you're putting the information there, it'll be posted. As far as the newspaper, it is a small, small newspaper, but it is up to us to make it to the next level. And that means we need 501 signatures. I've had about 150 signatures. Miss Marla took my papers. She's gonna have a place for you to say, I read the newspaper. You can get it digitally. You can get it um, on Facebook, because it's on the Facebook page as well. And I send it out and on my social medias. But in order for us to have that communication that Mr. Terry wants in that newspaper, we have to be active participants. So sign up, say you read the newspaper, whether it's digital or you pick it up from the post office or the courthouse or wherever, and we can get to that next level and have, um, what's it called, um, legal, pu pu legal public notices so that we can keep our information in DeSoto and not have to push it to Charlotte County because they have the more robust newspaper. So. If everybody here signs up, and I know some of you already have, that gets us closer to our goal. Thank Great. you. Thanks, Amanda. Sign up. All right. Thank you so much. Good to be with you. Now you can stay informed and connected to what's happening in DeSoto County. Read the Patterson Foundation's new DeSoto Digest. It's a monthly digital newsletter. Scan the QR code to sign up. It's free. And if you have a story or an idea to share, send us an email to aspirationstoaction at thepattersonfoundation.org.